All right. Thanks so much. Kelly, I'm going to take off my headset. So if you need to talk to me, uh, just bang on the wall or something. Okay. All right. Hey, wow. Thanks, everybody, so much for joining us today. My name is Greg Lewis. Uh, before we begin, the first thing we must always do whenever we have a discussion here on our channel is do our um, disclaimer, uh, which is this, this demonstration is designed to instruct you on using Metastock and accompanying software plugins and is not a recommendation to buy or sell but rather guidelines to interpreting and using the specific indicators and features within the software. The information, software, and techniques presented today should know, only be used by investors who are aware of the risk inherent in trading. Metastock shall have no liability for any investment decisions based on the use of their software, any trading strategies, or any information provided in connection with the company. So we will have specific uh, securities we'll be pulling up today. That by no means is a recommendation you should buy or sell because I'm not that kind of a professional. All right. Uh, let's make sure I'm going to be working. Here. Okay. So today is about moving averages and it is a one on one course. And uh, I put a little box here in there to remind me to say, uh, I'm not sure 101 means everything, uh, the same thing everywhere you go in the world, but here in the US, when you say 101, that means you're usually going to high school uh, course or university course, and 101 indicates it's a beginner course. So today is a beginner's course. And I say that only because um, we, we make no assumptions on you at all about knowledge of technical analysis, trading, math, well, maybe a little math. Uh, and so if this is not you know, something that, if you're already fairly aware of moving averages and what they are. This may not be the course for you, and maybe you can attend a 201 course we do later on. Either way, everyone's welcome, and we appreciate you coming along. Another thing I'd like to point out is we are simulcasting right now on GoToWebinar as well as uh, YouTube. You can watch on either one. It doesn't make any difference to us. Uh, Kelly Clement, my boss, is uh, uh, managing chat and questions on both Google to webinar and YouTube. So if you have a question, go ahead and ask it. And uh, when I have a chance, I'll pause and take questions. So we encourage all kinds of questions and all kinds of chat and don't be shy. Oh, and also while I'm thinking of it, don't hesitate to like and subscribe our YouTube channel if that's where you are right now. In fact, even if you're not on our YouTube channel, make sure you go over there at some point during this presentation, like, subscribe, and hit that bell so you'll be notified of when we do presentations like this in the future. And we usually do two to three of them a week. So it uh, would behoove you to do that. And it helps us too. Okay, uh, a little bit about today's presentation. I, of course, I know it's conceptually what moving averages are and, and everything, but to get to specific, I don't have the specific calculations on my fingertips. So I did rely heavily on uh, technical analysis from A to Z. This is a book written by Steve Akalis about 20 years ago. This, well, this edition came out 20 years ago. Steve Akalis is actually the founder of our company, uh, Metastock, and uh, we have no professional relationship with him anymore, but uh, you can buy this book, I should say, for about 30 bucks, I think it was, on um, Amazon, I saw it. And it's a great reference. I refer it to all the time. Everyone here at the company has a copy of it. And it's really the Bible, I think, of technical analysis. So absolutely, uh, if you want to know more about technical analysis in terms of calculations and concepts, this is a really good place for you to go to. Also, uh, and again, we have no, we have a business uh, association with these guys, but they're, this isn't a, a paid plug. Uh, stocks and Commodities, Technical Analysis of Stocks and Commodities is a monthly magazine that just has tons of this kind of stuff. Um, charting and uh, analysis and calculations and everything that you could totally nerd out on this stuff if you want to on both of these resources. Finally, uh, we do have, this is a series of 101 classes. So we have things like, um, I think Candlesticks 101 and uh, Bollinger Bands 101. If that's something you're interested in, go to our YouTube channel and check it out. All right, uh, also a little bit about me. I'm the marketing director here at Metastock. I've been here for 15 years. Uh, I have to say that doesn't really make me a veteran here. We have a lot of people that are here longer than I am, including my boss and uh, Jeff Gibby, who you see constantly on this channel. Um, I, uh, grad I'm a graduate of Brigham Young University as well as the um, Pepperdine. Uh, I got my MBA at Pepperdine. And um, that's all about me you need to know. Okay, so today we're gonna talk about what a moving average is, uh, how it's calculated, why one would use moving average, what are different types of moving averages, uh, when to use different types of moving averages, 
problems with moving averages, how to scan for a moving average, and how to test a moving average. Okay. All right, and uh, let's see back up. Excuse me. Let's even back up another moment before we begin and, and talk about uh, essentially the two ways you'd look at the market. Uh, there's fundamental analysis and technical analysis. Fundamental analysis is when you look at everything in the overall economy, you know, all uh, economic indicators, all like price, value of company, you know, uh, economic conditions, environmental conditions, and uh, use that to analyze a particular market or, or a particular security. In technical analysis, you're really only concerned about stock, uh, price and volume. And uh, the assumptions about everything else uh, are that it'll be shown through those two variables. And that's really what we'll be doing today is technical analysis. When you talk about moving averages, that's really something that concerns a technical analyst, not so much a fundamental analyst. Also, um, Moving average is considered an, an, an indicator. Uh, there's several different types of indicators. Well, there's hundreds of different types of indicators. There's four major categories. And today's indicator is clearly a trend indicator, uh, along with things like the MACD. Uh, there's other time that, that's you know, concerned about strength and direction of trend. There's other things like momentum with, the, with these particular um, indicators, volatility and volume. But today, we're really talking about a trend indicator and uh, specifically a lagging indicator, okay? All right, uh, just to give you a conceptual, first of all, a lot of you may have heard moving average. Man, you can't, I don't think I ever hear a presentation by any of our partners or any professionals when they don't bring up moving averages. You'll hear SMA and EMA, and those are the two things we're primarily gonna be covering today. And I, when I first started trading, I really wondered why that's everywhere. It's so prevalent. And the reason is pretty basic. Uh, if you look at this, these data points right here, you know, I just plotted out, they're just fairly random data points. You can think of these as prices or anything. Uh, you're not really sure what's going on, right? I mean, you can see uh, maybe on the x-axis, x-axis, you can see a time variable, but you're not really sure what's going on with the trend. And with a, uh, with a moving average, that sort of smooths it out and gives you some idea, some notion of the movement and direction of those, of that data. By the way, this, I didn't calculate this. I just drew this on here to give you a conceptual idea of what a moving average does. So, um, okay, here's a set of prices. Now, you, you I assume I, everyone knows what just doing an average means, getting an average out of any number set is pretty simple math, and I assume we all learned that in high school and college. So in this case, you'd just add up all of the numbers at the top, and then divide that sum by 10, so that sum is 52, you divide it by 10, it's 5.2. So the average of all these numbers, not a moving average, just the average of all these numbers is 5.2. Now if you chart that, you can quickly see that's not very helpful. It just gives you a, a line through the, you know, the average is the darker line and the price is the blue line. Uh, light blue line, it doesn't give you an idea what's going on. It gives you no real information. I mean, I guess it tells you kind of where the middle of the set is, but that, that's not useful to a trader. Um, in the case of, here's the same uh, set of numbers, and we'll call them prices. Uh, if you do a moving average, in this case, a five period moving average, you're employing just a little bit of them at a time and going, so for, in this case, we're taking five, the first five of these numbers, we're adding them up and that's 20 dividing that by the period, which is five. And oh, by the way, today we'll be talking about periods, pretty much we're gonna be talking about day, um, and the charts I'll be showing you will be daily charts that we won't be, they won't be intraday, they'll all be intraday. We'll, we'll, they'll just be daily charts, actually. Uh, as you pr progress, you, could, you take the next set of numbers and sum them and divide, and then the next set of numbers and sum them divide by five, and you can see where this is going. As you go along the line here at the top, you're developing a uh, series of numbers that are the moving average. So their affiliate, so that 4.0 is the moving average for the five and the previous five days. The 5.2 is the moving average for the eight and the previous five days. And if you chart that, you get something more like this. And you can see the dark blue line is the five day moving average, the price is the light blue line. And this gives you some idea, right, of what's going on uh, with this information. It gives you some idea of a trend, uh, this isn't a great example because you can kind of already see it's an upward trend, but it, it, it just smooths things out for you. Um, and that's the basic concept of moving average. 
There are seven popular types of moving averages. I'm sorry, I'm very thirsty, and this is a very hot studio today. So I'm taking, taking lots of drinks, excuse me. There are seven popular types of moving averages. One is the simple moving average, which applies weight equally. Now, we'll be using the term weight a lot during this presentation. And uh, I, I, you probably already know what that means, but it's kind of hard for me to explain if you think about it. If you do know what it means, think of a way to explain it because it's hard. Basically, uh, if you're applying, the e you have three numbers, you're applying the weight equally, it means every number contributes to the final equation in an equal way. But if it's weighted in one direction or another, let's say it's weighted at the end, which is what an exponential moving average is, it applies the weight toward the end of that string of numbers, right? So if you add a, uh, the plus one or whatever to those in, in numbers, you can see how they'd have a, a stronger contribution to the moving average. And we'll talk about that here in a minute. But when I talk about weight, that's what I'm saying. It gets more, those numbers contribute more to the final equation, okay? And if you have a better way to explain that, I'd love to see it in chat. <laughs> okay, and then there's other things like triangular that applies weight to the middle of the string. And, and again, if we're let's say we're talking about 100 periods that applies to the, you know, the 50s. Uh, you have a variable which changes weight based on volatility. You have the uh, volume adjusted moving average which changes weight based on each period's volume, as the name would suggest. You have weighted which uh, applies to the end of the period which is kind of like exponential. And then you have time series which is uh, uh, also known as time series forecast which is kind of different than all of this and requires a whole different discussion. And really today we're just not really, the only thing today we're gonna be talking about is simple and exponential. Uh, these things, once they're under hood, understood conceptually, you can apply to these other things and, and it doesn't really require a lot of additional explanation. Okay, uh, critical component of a moving average is the period, right? So you you can imagine, you know, you've, you've there's got 100 day periods and uh, five day periods and 10 day periods. And again, it's it's how much, how far down that data stream you're gonna use in your calculation. Uh, in TAS, we call that technical analysis from A to Z. He specifies that a very short market cycle would require shorter periods, like five to 13 days. And longer market, market cycle, like long-term, you know, would require a period of 100 to 200 days. In fact, a very, very popular, um, moving average used in technical analysis is the 200 day moving average. We'll talk about that more in a second. Um, I don't really consciously think of this when I'm trading and using moving averages, but it's something to consider. Uh, Kelly, do we have any points, questions at this point? Oh, I got my heads up, I wanna to talk to Kelly. Uh, at this point, uh, the only question I've actually had is about uh, if the recording will be available, and I've already and I've expressed that uh, you can watch okay. it again on YouTube, or you can watch it. Uh, we'll email out a recording to those who registered. So what I hear you saying is I'm such a masterful instructor that there are no questions that could possibly be asked. You are spot on, spot on. Okay, just just no, making sure. Thanks, Kelly. Great so far. Thank you. Okay. <laughs> All right. So uh, just for fun. If you want to geek out on this is the calculation for the simple moving average. Again, remember a simple moving average is everything is weighted equally, uh, and n is the number of periods. Uh, I'm going to show you several calculations along the way, but you don't really need to know these. You'll never have to actually do any of these calculations because uh, Metastock will do them for you, and I'll show you that here in a minute. But it's good to kind of understand what's going on under the hood, right? Um, this is it looks more difficult than it is, but it's basically just what I illustrated in the previous thing where it showed it moving, you know, shifting along with the uh, number of periods at the bottom. Uh, Kelly, I need you back. And I'm back. Mm. Kelly, do you see the chart? I see the I'm chart. I'm looking at? I see it. Okay, this is three different periods of simple moving averages. One is a 200, one is a 50, and one I think was a nine. Which would you guess is which? Let's see, I'm going to go- 50 and a nine. I'm going to go green is nine, blue is 50, and red is 200. Exactly. Thank you, Kelly. I'll come back to you later. All right. All right, so that, that sort of makes sense, right? 
you, you realize that any uh, smaller period is going to kind of stick closer to the current price on the day. And by the way, I didn't want to overstep. Uh, like I said, I'm making no assumptions, but I'm assuming most people understand this is a price chart. This is volume going across the bottom. This is a, a bar that shows open, high, low, close. And the green line is, in fact, a nine-day moving average. It means it only calculates about nine periods back to about here. So, of course, it's going to stick closer because of math to the current day's price. But you can see it still smooths that out, right? It's still, it's not as choppy. Like even if you have outliers like this, it's still gonna hug closer to itself because it's taking an average of those numbers. That's conceptually what an average does. The blue line, or the I'm pretty sure this is 50 day moving average, uh, will do it again, but not to the same degree. It will still kind of follow the trend and give you a good idea of what the trend is, but it will, definitely stray away from the the current price more than um, a, a shorter time period. And then the 200 average moving average, which is the highest I think most people ever use, really just gives you a good idea of where that trend's going and uh, when, you know, so the price is always kind of outlying, right? It's always above or below. It's, it doesn't cross over that often. And when it does, that actually speaks to uh, technical, technical analysis and uh, to an analyst. And uh, we'll talk about that in a second. Another thing you might be asking yourself is why do we even care? Why do we care if price is how far? Like, how do, what, what does it say to us when we see this price right here that's so disparate from the 200 day moving average? What does that even mean? Why do we care? Well, conceptually, uh, and I don't know the science, it could be standard deviations of whatever I, but basically uh it's known that price tends to hug the trend it tends to stick with the trend to a certain degree uh when there's a disparate outlier that usually means something it usually means you're heading off into another direction or means it's about time to hit a support or resistance and come back to the trend so that's why analysts kind of watch the trend because it gives you an idea an idea of where the price might go. This is also a good time to remind you that this is a lagging, right? It's a lagging. So uh, you're not going to see, well, we'll talk about that in a second because we haven't actually talked about, um, ooh, what's in my mic? we haven't actually talked about um, crossovers yet. So that was a simple moving average. Now we'll talk about the exponential moving average, which is, I don't know if I, I think, I swear I, when I watch presentations, it seems like the exponential moving average is referred to more than the simple moving average, but they're both very, very, very common. The exponential moving average is calculated by applying a percentage of today's closing price to a percentage of yesterday's moving average value. This places more weight on the recent prices, okay? So when you calculate that, and uh, this calculation is gonna make your head spin a little bit, but don't worry, again, you don't have to remember it. It's, remember we said that EMA is today's price times EP, and we'll talk about EP in a second, plus yesterday's price times one minus EP. Well, EP is the exponential percentage. Now, this, what I'm showing you right here is exactly how Metastock uh, calculates, uh, this is the default calculation for uh, exponential moving average. What it does is it takes the time period, so the only real variables here are time period, uh, because time period plugs into this EP. And when you take the time period, let's say the time period is, uh, well, let's, let me show you, I'll show right here. So let's say the time period is nine days. Uh, that gives you a 0.2 exponential percentage, which here would be 0.2 and here is 0.8. So since it's one minus that, it's always gonna be a ratio, right? So if it's 0.2, it'll be 0.8. If it's 0.3 on this side, it'll be 0.7 on that side. Uh, 0.5, 0.5, and, and so on. Again, that's not really important to know, but it's kind of important to understand that the higher, oh, so excuse me. So if it's a nine day moving average or period, the the exponential, exponential the EMA, <laughs> sorry, there's so many things to say here, is 11.4. However, if it's 25 day period, that's gonna be a little lower. So the point I'm making is it uses the distance, uh, the, the amount of the um, periods to determine how large that that uh, extra oomph is going to be and how much it's going to be weighted, so there's more weight. Uh, the shorter at the end, the shorter you use um, the period, and the longer periods you use, it'll be have less weight uh, than it would have already had as a simple moving average. Wow, that's a lot to say. Again, it all comes back to let's see what it looks like on the chart, Kelly. 
Kelly, are you there? I am here. Kelly, one of these lines is a simple, I think it's 100, uh, it's probably not 100 periods, so I'm gonna, like it's more like a, I can't remember. It doesn't make any difference. The periods are the same. One is an exponential and one is a simple moving average. Which one would you guess is which? If I'm um, honest, I'm not sure I remember. My guess is the red is the exponential because it moves with price much quicker. Whereas the blue would be the simple because it's lagging behind price a little bit. You are correct, sir. Thank you so much, Kelly. Uh, any questions at this point, Kelly, while I have you on the line? Yeah, so we're, uh, we actually had a question over from uh, YouTube about uh, different types of moving averages that are out there. Uh, these aren't actually in your presentation, but uh, one of them was the whole moving average and the ALMA and the LSMA, uh, if, if they were available on Metastock. Isn't that part of um, Landry's? Uh, so the so the whole moving average is actually one that's uh, included in Metastock. So that's built in. It's uh, Alan Hole. He's a technical analyst out of Australia. And then the okay. other ones, uh, you can get the formulas for off of our forum. Okay. The moving averages that I'm discussing today are the seven most common, and they are all built into the ones I did on the previous screen when I showed you the seven, and I'll show you how to do it in Metastock in a second, but they're all included in Metastock. So did that, did that answer the question, Kelly? Yes, it did. Thank you very much. Thank you. All right. Uh, so now, again, you might be saying to yourself, again, we've talked about how it's important to understand that, you know, trends, the, the, the prices tend to hug a trend to a certain degree. Uh, but how's that articulated? How's that analyzed? How's that come out in telling you anything, right? How, how, how do you, <laughs> how's it demonstrated? Uh, well, there's several popular interpretations of moving average. One is comparing the relationship between the moving average and the price. Uh, a buy signal is generated when the securities price moves above the moving average line and vice versa. Uh, a sell indication is when the opposite thing happens. Uh, another popular way to interpret it is when the price, when the moving average, uh, excuse me, comparing the relationship between two moving averages. A buy signal is generated when uh, a more responsive moving average crosses over a less responsive moving average. And uh, let's talk about that, I think, now. Oh, and we'll talk about that in a second in Metastock. A uh, very popular of that number two uh, situation is the crossover of a 250 day moving average, which we'll be uh, demonstrating here in a minute. Okay, and then I found this on um, this little quote online somewhere. I think it was at Invest Investopedia. Uh, it says, traders who employ technical analysis find moving average very useful and insightful when applied correctly. However, they also realize that these signals can create havoc when used improperly or misinterpreted. All moving averages commonly used in technical analysis are by their very nature lagging indicators. So as a reminder, uh, you probably wouldn't use this in day trading. I don't think day traders are typically concerned with a trend. Um, this is, and again, it's lagging, meaning, you know, other than uh, it's not going to find a breakout. It's not going to, you know, price, guys who watch prices or uh, patterns aren't really going to be this kind of trader. This is when you're, you know, the market's already started in that direction. It, it's already gotten some strength in that direction. That's when somebody who's watching these kind of moving averages cross over are going to take that trade or get out of that trade. They're not going to do it at the po pivot point. They're going to do it when there's some some momentum built up, when, not technically, but figuratively. And when there's, uh, you know, some notion that that's going to continue in that direction. So it's more of a conservative, I guess, way of trading, you'd say. Okay, let's open Metastock. I already have, and here's Metastock. If you're not familiar with Metastock, uh, don't worry. Uh, we're gonna cover a few things, and I'm not gonna talk about how to do it specifically, but you can find out more about Metastock by going to metastock.com. All right, so first thing we're gonna do is open a chart. And the way you do that here is you can, it, again, I'm not gonna describe too much how to do things today, but you go to chart, and let's see, Apple seems like a good enough chart. It's always a good chart. Also, Apple's a really good trending chart, so it's good. Oh, I've already got these things here. Let me just delete those. I wanted to add them, show you how to add them. 
All right, so this is a clean chart. There's no indicators on it. There's nothing going on. It just shows you price, price bars, and um, also volume at the bottom. So this little pull down thing right here is a list of all the indicators available in Metastock. Uh, right out of the box, Metastock has hundreds of indicators, and when you get add-ons, there are hundreds more, and so there's a whole lot. Moving average is a very basic one, and I'm gonna show you how to use it right now. You just pull it down onto the chart, and immediately this dialog comes up and it says, uh, what time periods do you want? Well, we've already talked, there's multiple other time periods. So I'm gonna say a 200. A 200 simple moving average is a very, very common moving average, and you'll see that all the time when you see analysts discuss uh, securities. And then, as I mentioned before, all of these seven types are available here. Uh, and today we're gonna just talk about simple and exponential, but the weighted time series, triangular variable and volume adjuster are all available here. So we're gonna say simple. And again, with any, as with any line you draw on Metastock, you have options. You can make that line a little thicker or make it uh, dotted or whatever. We're gonna make this a little thicker and we're gonna say red. We'll plot it on the chart. So there is a 200 day moving average. And you can see, if we go out a little bit, that that's a pretty good indication of the trend of Apple. Of course, Apple has been trending up more or less for the last 25 years or so. Uh, this chart goes back to 2015. And this is the 100 day moving average uh, going back Again, this moving average goes back more than 100 days, but this is the last time it could calculate because this is not more than 100 periods before that. Anyway, you can see right here, it's showing a, a, an upward trend almost all along the way. And you can see that when Apple started to dip down here for a significant amount of time, this didn't really pick up on that until sometime after it had already taken place. It started taking place up here, but this didn't really catch it until here. Same with this. Uh, we started seeing an upshift right about here, well, really back here, but it didn't really catch that until right about here because it's lagging. But once it does pick it up, it's a pretty good indicator of what's going on with that security in this case, right? Uh, again, this works better with trending securities. Apple certainly a trending security. And uh, that's the 200 day moving average. Now, if you want to see something a little tighter, you can pull that moving average again. And we'll say this one's a 50. I think I mentioned before that a 50-day moving average crossing over a 200-day moving average is a popular um, indicator for analysts. And in fact, that particular, you know, let me, before I get ahead of myself, uh, let's make this uh, green, because we can, and make it a little heavier, because we can, and plop that down. Now, when these cross over, that's a pretty big deal. Let's go back to, let's go out here. Okay, you can see right here there was a crossover. So the 50-day moving average, simple moving average, crossed above the 200-day moving average, and that is called a golden cross, and uh, that is a buy indicator. And you can see in this case, it would have worked out pretty well. <laughs> you would have done pretty well had you taken that as a buy indicator of uh, this particular security. So uh, I should also point out, in Metastock, you can, if you wanted to, I mean, it's pretty easy to see the crossovers here. You can actually set it up so the little arrow shows there using the expert advisor or whatever you want to. There's lots of ways to customize Metastock to do whatever you want. Uh, so, but <clears throat> as I mentioned, this crossover was a pretty good, pretty good. This crossover, not not so much. You would have gotten a little bit, had you shorted that or gotten out of this one, I suppose it was a little late. Again, it's a lagging indicator. But it's kind of hard to tell at a glance really how well the, 50 to uh, sort of 250 day moving crossover is gonna work on a particular security, especially you know when you're just looking at a chart like this over time, you kind of get an idea, but you don't really know. And that's where the system tester comes in. And the system tester is basically a back tester. Uh, if you don't understand what back testing is, it's uh, just basically looking at one particular indicator and seeing how it would have done over a particular security over time or, or a group of securities. So now, if we want to test this particular situation where we want to find out how well we would have done if we'd have bought at the crossover of the 50 to the 200 and sold at the, at the reverse, uh, this is one way we can do it. We can test it. And uh, anytime you do a system test in Metastock, again, if you're not familiar with this screen, I'm not going to go too much into it now, but we have a lot of videos on system testing on Metastock. Go ahead and look it up. Uh, anytime you want to do a new test, you know, these are the out of the boxes ones. You can just say new system test right here and you can go ahead and do that. I've already made one right here. If I double click on it, it kind of shows you what's going on here. 
Uh, notice you have things you can do with the buy order, sell order. So this is when you're telling the test when to indicate a buy and a sell, or short, or buy to cover. Uh, and I get, don't want to go too much into program language today. Again, we have lots of videos on that. But this, if you can see that, I don't know how large, I don't think there's a way for me to really zoom in on that. We're saying the A variable equals the moving average when the close is 50 period, excuse me, on the close at 50 periods and simple. And the B variable is the close at 200 periods and simple, and we're looking for a crossover between A and B. Conversely, for the cell, we're looking for a crossover between B and A. By the way, uh, you might ask yourself why the close. That's typically when people do moving averages, but you could do it at the open, I suppose, or at some point, I, I don't know, or the average day. I don't know, how, there's, I'm sure there's other uh, calculations you can do, but for most moving averages, simply the ones we're looking at today, it's always the close. Okay, so once you've got that set up and you can name it whatever you want, and let's say you wanna test Apple specifically, you could test many securities against this, but we're just testing Apple right now, and we're gonna do it for the last five years, and we're gonna say start system test. I wonder if I had more than one security. I must have I must have had more securities. I'm sorry. Let me start over again. There's another tip about using Metastock. If you always gotta check on this and check it again to make sure everything's because this, this is a whole huge list, and so you can't always see when things are checked. So I think I had some other securities checked. So let's oh, I have to cancel the simulation I had going before. Let's try that again. Right? One year. And oh, I should also mention on the system test that, um, again, this isn't a class about system testing, but there are some parameters that you can set up about what kind of equity you want to uh, put into every trade, uh, your margins, uh, the trade execution, and that's all uh, things you can do in this. We're not going to really talk about that today. And let me start that system test again. It should be, yeah, it should take just a second. All right, so this is the results of a system test of the 200 the 50 crossover for Apple. And you can see if you'd done five years, if you'd traded just bought and sold based on that condition, you'd have profited 272,000. Now, of course, that was a lot of, <laughs> that was only a few trades. Uh, in fact, there's only one trade. It must've been that last one. Uh, but um, the one we showed on the chart. But, so you can say, yeah, for the last five years, that would've been a pretty good way to trade Apple. Uh, also, if you look at the equity, you can see that, yeah, it looks like we got in just for that one trade that I pointed out right around here. Uh, it, that dipped a little bit, but it has a pretty good equity curve. So this test tells me, yeah, that's a pretty good indicator for a long trending uh, security like Apple. Um, but let's say, notice Apple today is not, let me get out of here. Apple today is not showing that kind of crossover. So what if you wanted to find things that are showing that kind of crossover today? So you've, you've established in your mind, yeah, I'm interested in this sort of, uh, crossover of simple uh, moving averages, uh, how can I find those? Well, as you may know, Metastock all has a scanning capability we call the Explorer. And the Explorer, again, we don't have a built-in one that will scan for this sort of uh, thing, but we have one you can make really super easy. Jeff Gibby helped me make it yesterday. And um, I called it Greg's scan. It's down there somewhere. Just a moment, please. Okay. Greg's Golden Cross. And I'm going to scan it on... I'll probably have to scan it on a lot of things because this isn't a very common uh, occurrence since it's such a long-term thing. So let's start that exploration. And whilst I'm exploring, wait, did I start it or not? Yes. Uh, notice here in the Explorer, it just shows you how many things it's going through. And if it's rejected, it's already rejected most of them. And I'm maybe, I thought I was gonna see if Kelly had any questions while we're doing this. Well, Kelly, do we have any questions while we're scanning for this? Uh, we had some uh, questions uh, that actually addressed in YouTube about uh, the slope of the moving average and ways to calculate that. Uh, I recommended okay. people go check out some of Vince Bora's work because he does a lot uh, of research on the slope of the moving averages. Okay, thank you. All right, uh, we got three hits on this. Now, um, so basically these three securities, I don't, let's see, Town Sports International, First Cash, and something, I don't know these securities. Uh, basically have crossovers today of uh, the 50 crossing over the 200. So it's a buy opportunity. I didn't do for shorts. I just did for longs. And uh, we could open up these, each of them and look at them, but uh, better that we should maybe 
close out of here and say of those three, why don't we test them and see how they would have done before we even get into the nitty gritty of looking at them individually. So go back to the system tester. I can say Greg's golden cross test, which we you've already seen. And then if I go to the very bottom, I can say test the last exploration and it will test those that I just saw in that exploration, which is those three securities. So that should take like a second and it does. And here they are. Um, we can sort this by net profit. Now what we're looking at here is the result of a um, system test with multiple securities. So unlike the other one where it just went to write to the report, this is giving you a, before you dig in, a look at how each, each of the securities does compared to one or the other. And of course this town sports had the best net profit. And right before we even get into it, you can see things about each of these securities. You know, you can see the percent gain. Uh, you can see uh, how many trades had to be taken. But if you get into it and view a report, we'll look at this one. This one would have done 201,000. Uh, buy and hold would have not done well at all. And you only had one trade. Again, this is really long term. So this super, these are like position trades. Um, but it gives you a good idea of, uh, again, just conceptually how Metastock works is it, you, you can, once you determine a system or a uh, indicated you're interested in. Metastock has a very good way of one, uh, edit, you know, uh, making it customizable to make that, you know, if we could make it a 200 and 100 or 225, you know, uh, so it makes it very customizable as well. Uh, you can search for it and also test on it. And uh, that's what we've done here. And if you want to go ahead and look at this chart, we can plot it on here. And, oh, I don't know why I didn't below my chart, but, oh, I don't know why I did that. I must have opened that before and saved it without the chart on it, so I apologize for that. Let's go ahead and just look at this. Greg, you can, you, you can try right-clicking on the chart and uh, choose display I'm sorry. security. I'm sorry, say again? Uh, just, uh, you could try right-clicking on the chart itself and do display base security. It's possible it got deleted when you were looking at it last. Yeah, I, uh, you right click on it, say on the on the chart itself. Oh, okay. Sorry. Well, I never got to the. Oh, I see what you're saying. Once you open the chart, sure. Yeah. Let me go go there. It's, oh, well, there it is. So I came up this time, or maybe that was a different security. Anyway, the only reason I was going to show point this out is, uh, and this is actually a built-in function of um, the system tester. It will plot on a chart for you whatever system it was searching for. Um, but if I open this chart up, generally with the lines that I had showed you before, it wouldn't show these buy and sell indicators. But here you've got them, and you can see how they work. All right. So you may be asking yourself, uh, I'm sorry. So at this point, you're probably saying to yourself, well, this all sounds great. Uh, how do I get my hands on Metastock? Because this sounds like something I could really use in my daily trading life. And I'll tell you that right now. Before I do that, Kelly, while I have you online, are there any additional questions? Uh, so at this point, uh, there have been a few questions over on the, um, on the YouTube side about how, excuse me, how to calculate some different things. Uh, but Jeff's actually been giving some formulas over there, which wouldn't really go well to the talking about formulas over, over this. So yeah, uh, I would say if you have questions about the formulas, refer to the chat. But other than that, uh, in general, uh, we're good at the moment. Yeah, so when we were uh, discussing things in Metastock today, again, I tried to predicate all this with this is very basic and uh, Metastock can do a lot of things. And I try to burn through some of the things that Metastock can do. And some of the things we looked at today were you know, basic calculations. Well, if you wanted to know the calculation for all, most of the stuff we could do, you right click on it and hit it and it go to go into Metastock. It'll show you what a MACD is. By the way, uh, one thing I may have neglected to mention is these uh, these moving averages, a lot of them are components of indicators. So they'll use multiple versions of like the MACD uh, and uh, Bolger bands. They'll use a lot of these to help calculate their specific indicators. And uh, in Metastock, you can generally, in, uh, Many times, for popular indicators, just right-click on it and uh, on the on the chart where it is, and you can see what the calculations are and how they work. So, Medic Stock is a great um, educational tool. And the other things we talked about is back testing. If you want to know more about back testing, go ahead and check us out on YouTube. 
uh, system tester. And we talked about scanning. If you want to know more about how to do that, you can check it out here. Charting, if you want to know more about that, we've got tons and tons and tons of video, which is a great time to remind you to go ahead and like and subscribe on YouTube. We do this all the time. And if you want to know more about trading in general, as well as Metastock, YouTube is a great, great resource. We throw everything we do on YouTube. All right, so finally, uh, like I said before, you may be wondering to yourself, hey, this sounds pretty great. How can I get my hands on this thing? Well, uh, right now we have a Metastock 3 for, and that it includes Metastock, uh, a Metastock three months for the price of one plus training. Uh, so that's three months of Metastock plus market data. We have two flavors of Metastock. One is called Metastock DC, which is daily charts. That's more for the um, da um, uh, position or uh, you know, non-real-time trader, swing trader. And then we have, uh, that has data that goes along with it. And we also have Metastock RT, which is real-time, which is more geared for day traders or something that just needs faster results. And that includes Zenith market data. Uh, they come at various prices and uh, you can go ahead and go to the resources I've given you here to find those out. But uh, with that, your three for you get free recorded training with Linda Frain. Lynn is one of the older, uh, <laughs> one of the longer tenured. <laughs> so I'm, I'm actually the oldest person here at Metastock. Lynn is one of the longest tenured people here at Metastock. And uh, he's got, he knows everything. He, there's nothing about Metastock he doesn't know. And uh, he's a great resource. And you can get free training with him when you do this, as well as you get free white glove service. Uh, that is our support team. We'll get you on the phone and help you get installed, help you get up and running so there's just no problems. Um, then uh, free unlimited support if you have issues, not just technical, but if you have questions about how to do things, you can do things, you can give us a call at support. If you're interested in this, go ahead and give us a call at 800 882-3040. Uh, you can chat live right now uh, with the Metastock sales representative at metastock.com slash sales chat. And again, if you have questions about anything I said today, these guys will be able to answer that question. Absolutely. And if you want to just go online and order this, we do have a metastock.com slash P421. Uh, let me see if I can pull that in here and show you. Oh, that's not it. Just a second, please. I'm not sure I can do this. Yeah, here we go. So you can see this uh, is a good resource actually because it talks, it sh has a little video about the Explorer. It has a little video about the Expert Advisor, the System Tester, uh, the Forecaster. These are some of the power tools that Metastock incorporates, uh, the Quote Center and Option Scope, and then it's sh where you can get the, the three for a deal that we talked about. So let me get that out of there so we can go back to this information. Uh, I think that's it, Kelly, unless you have anything else you think I should add? Any, any other questions we should, or uh, comments we should respond to before I sign uh, off? One of the questions was, is uh, how to determine what works best. Is the moving average cross best, or is just using a single moving average above below best? So, uh, first answer that I would say to that is, we just discussed testing. You can test virtually anything you can put on a on a chart. No, that's not really true. Most things you can put on a chart in Metastock you can test. So you can test it yourself based on the securities that you're looking at. Because remember, the the the, the strongest contributor to this whole process of moving averages is the periods. So, so you'd want to test your security with different types of periods and different crossovers. I just use the 250 because that's a very common one. I know uh, there's other ones and uh, Another common thing is people just use the price uh, crossing over the moving average, but most people would use a uh, smaller period uh, moving average rather than price because, again, it just sort of smooths it out a little bit and it kind of takes the outliers out and you can kind of see what it's doing. I don't know if that answered the question. But. Yes, that was actually a really good okay. answer. Okay. Uh, another right. question, did, uh, does Metastock have an India script? I'm not sure. I don't think I even understand what that means. Does that mean actual uh, language? Uh, My guess is yes. Yeah, Metastock, right now we have no, I can't think of the technical term for it. Metastock only comes in one flavor, which is English. Um, we don't have a localized version side for that. We apologize. But uh, uh, if you do have any questions, uh, I know that a lot of people from India specifically have put out videos about Metastock in uh, the local language. So in, in many countries, that's the case. So that could be a resource for you. And then just Anything uh, else? 
Yeah, just a, just a comment, actually, from somebody. It says, thank you so much, sir. Love from India. Great job, sir. Ah. Keep sharing your videos. Thank you. Well, thank you. And on that high note, I'm going to sign out. Thank you so much today. Thank you very much, Kelly, Clement, on that side. And everyone, I hope you have a great day and successful trading.